TV Reader's Digest. True stories from real life collected from the pages of the most famous, widely read magazine in the world. Ordeal at Yuba Gap. The crisis that overtook the city of San Francisco streamliner to become the greatest drama of the snow since the famed tragedy at Donner Pass. Six hours of surgery. The taut, exciting drama that envelops the lives of five people of medicine working in the hushed concentration of the operating room to save a boy's life. The man who beat death. The warm, moving, personal story of tennis champion Billy Talbert and his valiant uphill battle to victory over diabetes. The secret weapon of Joe Smith. The classic story of the United Nations and how one reporter proved to the Soviets that the pen is mightier than the sword. My first bullfight. The amusing and highly exciting story behind America's Toreador, Sidney Franklin's climb to fame and fortune as Brooklyn's first matador. Your favorite stories brought to life on TV Reader's Digest. Describe the murderer. Well, he, he was he, he was a big man, Inspector. I, I think he wore a dark overcoat. I, I can't remember. It was it all happened so fast. Do you recall if uh, that window was open? Well, the window. Yes, yes. Uh, I remember uh, when I came home. I unlocked and opened it. It was a warm night. There are heavy vines up the wall to the window sill, Inspector. The flowers have been trampled down below. There are no fingerprints on the window sill. No, sir. The thief knew his business. The thief? Has something been stolen? Well, Madame's jewel case is empty. Her ring finger was bleeding as though a ring had been torn off. Her engagement ring. Inspector Renault will be pleased to see you, Monsieur Bayval. But I will not be pleased to see Renault. Not pleased at all. My wife has been in her grave for two weeks and still no news of a murderer. Well, monsieur, we are doing our best. You are doing nothing. You have a solitary clue. I am calling on the prefect this morning and asking to relieve you of this case. That is your privilege, of course. Excuse me. The prefect has been summoned by the president of the Senate. He asked if Monsieur Boivard would be good enough to wait a few minutes. Oh, well, my office is at your service. Monsieur Bichois, take Monsieur's hat and his umbrella and inform me the instant the prefect returns. Hmm? Yes, sir. Allow me. I can't understand it. You call yourself policeman. What has happened to the great tradition of French detective work? Now, that man there, Bautillon, if he were alive today, the murderer would be behind bars. Oh, without question. Bautillon was our greatest master and my inspiration. It is even my humble privilege to occupy an office that once was his. This was once Bertillon's office? The man that invented fingerprinting? And they give it to a bungler like you? Forgive me, monsieur. Bertillon did not invent fingerprinting. Great man that he was. Of course he did. Everyone knows that. Fingerprinting was known to the Chinese over 1,500 years ago. Of course, Bertillon was the first man to use it here in France. If you would care to examine Bertillon's own notes on the matter, I have them here in his cabinet. This cabinet contains the actual relics of some of Bertillon's cases? Yes. Would you be interested to look at some of them while you're waiting for the prefect? These skulls, for instance. Bertillon himself brought these into Police Prefect Andrio's office one day, 75 years ago. Who are you? Alphonse Bertillon, applicant for the position of clerk. Oh, yes, yes, recommended by Senator Ledoux. What are these grinning horrors you brought with you? Uh, human skulls. I've been doing some medical research. Medical research? Are you interested in police work, young man? Or distributing pills? Oh, police work, sir. 
I've developed a method of identifying criminals. You see, I've classified the 222 bones of the human skeleton and discovered that the measurements of no two human beings are exactly alike. Now, you take these skulls. You take them, young man, and report to the chief file clerk. Don't waste my time. We have a system of identification. But an unreliable one. What? Criminals are identified only by written description. Now, if a thief changes his name or alters his appearance slightly by a new scar or a missing tooth, he's booked as a new offender. Of all the impudence, you apply for a job as a 10 franc clerk and you start to reorganize my department. I humbly apologize. I meant no offense. It's only that I'm so sure that anthropometry... That what? Anthropometry. That's what I call my system of scientific identification. I can think of shorter names to call it, certain of which might apply to its inventor. If your sponsor did not have such powerful influence, I'd... I can't refuse his request to employ you, Bertillon, but I can discharge you for cause. Remember that. Now you take those bones to the basement, bury them in the trash bin, and your theories on top of them. And climb up on your clerk stool. Again, eh? Still convicting crooks by the centimeter? You want lunch hour? Why don't you go home and have lunch like a sensible man? Incidentally, take your skinny friend with you and keep him there for a few days. Why? I haven't finished my new calculations. Having visitors from upstairs, inspection of files. We haven't had an inspection in years. They hardly know these files exist, and why should they? They're they're as useless as we are. We have jobs, Alphonse, and salaries every Saturday, and a new prefect. Oh, he's arrived? Have you seen him yet? What sort of a man is he? I haven't yet had the pleasure of meeting the distinguished Monsieur Kamikas, but the department's crawling with rumors. They say he's a devil for detail. Before the ink was dry on his appointment, he was going through Andrio's files. Nobody's job is safe. What's that? Armand is warning us. Someone is coming down. Shove that out of sight and get to work. It seems my inspection is no surprise. I wish this bureau could read the criminal mind as well as it does mine. So, these are the identification files? Yes, Monsieur Kamikas. You're the chief clerk? Yes, sir. This room's a disgrace. Yes, sir. We were going to have house cleaning, sir. I shouldn't look in there. So, there's a skeleton in the chief clerk's closet. It's not mine, sir. It's his. Yours? Yes, sir. And you must be the Bertillon who wrote the report I read in Andrea's files on some strange measurement system. Anthropometry. Yes, sir, I wrote it. In government ink, on government paper, and government time. Well... Young man, I can't waste this department's budget that way. I warned him, sir. Kindly allow me to warn him. Perhaps it will have more effect. Your report describes the present identification files as unreliable and virtually useless. I agree, Bertillon, emphatically, while your system at least is original. But no trap is any good until it has caught some mice. How long would it take to test yours? Could you allow me three months? Very well. If in three months you have convicted one criminal repeater, I will give your, what do you call it? anthropometry, a full-scale trial. If it fails... Or it won't fail. I'd stake my life on it. All right, hold it motionless, please. That's all. 
and take him back to his cell guard. I thought this was police headquarters, not a photograph gallery. One day it may be the largest gallery in all of Paris, with the ugliest subjects. The gallery of rogues. Did you list all scars and moles on his index card? Perfect mosaic of them. And most important, did you get his exact measurements? To the centimeter. Head, right ear, left middle finger, left forearm, left foot. Eleven of them to be exact. But Alphonse, this isn't work for policemen. This is work for tailors and dressmakers. So far, Jacques. Wait till you've measured your first murderer for his coffin. I won't have long to wait. Your three months are up next Friday. Oh. Well, I'll admit the two men look alike, but so do dozens of people. We can't convict on coincidence. It is not coincidence. Their 11 measurement points are identical. My research proves that no two human beings grow exactly alike. Well, I've sent for the prisoner himself, Bertillon. If you can convince him, you'll convince me. Come in. Ah, the gendarme who shoots with a camera. Mind your tongue, prisoner. Answer this man's questions. Your name is Maurice Dupont? Yes. You also have another name, Joseph Martin. What for? Why do I need two names? To avoid two convictions as the same man, when you know that four convictions will send you to Devil's Island. These are measurements I made of you this morning. And identical measurements of you as Martin made the day you left prison after serving a two-year sentence. He's lying. I have never been jailed before. What's he trying to do to me? I have rights under French law. It's your arms against French law that concern us. Continue. We note that Martin had several prominent scars. Dupont bears the same scars. Show your left arm. A twisting scar, 12 centimeters long. There are nine other such precise similarities. Sure, sure. He had two eyes, two ears, two hands. So has every man on the jury. They must believe their eyes when I show them these. Show them? Go ahead, these pictures prove I'm not Martin. Look, he has blonde hair. Mine's as black as coal. It was black the day of your arrest, but that was a week ago. Observe the roots. Blonde roots appearing under the dye. Of course they are. Now confess. You dyed your hair, you changed your name, but you couldn't change your face, your bones, or your scars. What will a confession get me? About five years less. All right. I'm Joseph Martin. Take him back to the cells. Well, a good beginning, young man. If your system meets every test as it has met this one, we shall have to give up being policemen and become scientists. As a farewell gesture, I've just packed your scientific belongings. Fortunately, you have a colleague who can carry it home for you. Thanks, Jock. That'll save me a lot of trouble. Goodbye, my quixotic friend. I do tease you a lot, but I'm really very sorry that your system failed in the final test. You'll find another job. I've got another job. And I'm not going home. Where then? Upstairs, to a new office. I've been appointed special assistant to the prefect to catalog every known criminal in Paris under a new system to be called the Bertillon Measurements. And this was the office Bertillon moved into. In the first year of his system, over 7,000 criminals were arrested. The jails of Paris could hardly hold the repeaters. And police departments all over the world began using Bertillon measurements. I wonder what could be holding the prefect. I regret this delay, Monsieur Bovell. And I regret you're not as clever at solving crime as you are at reminiscing about it. Only Bertillon could solve a perfect crime. That coil of rope, for example. That furnished the clue to one of his greatest triumphs. Would you care to hear the story? Go ahead. Ah. A dead man was found in an alley in the Latin Quarter. His body grotesquely doubled up and bound with that rope. You did well, Duclos, not to move the body. If I were you, Alphonse, I'd move the body to a morgue and forget the whole case. I've examined the surroundings. The murderer left no clue whatsoever. You haven't a very sharp eye, Jacques, for a man who's just been promoted to detective. 
You have a sharper one? A hundred times sharper. At the laboratory. What's this your partner's telling me, Bethio? That you're looking for a murderer under a microscope? I've reported the case as unsolvable and asked to be relieved from it. Well, it does seem one of those hopeless ones, Bertillon. You can withdraw, too, if you wish. Without prejudice. Withdraw? That's the last thing I want to do. Look at what I've discovered on that rope that bound the dead man. And on his clothes. Well, they look like fleas to me. But half the poor hungry devils of Paris have fleas. They are a rare species of black beetle. They're blind and can only live in enclosed, pitch-dark places which narrows the search down to the 100,000 cellars of Paris. Oh, no. Only the wine cellars along the Seine. Because fungi of wine fermentation is present. Also found in the victim's clothes were grains of a certain sand found only on the banks of the river. But how can you guess which cellar the dead man came from? Well, you don't even know his name. I shall know his name in a day or two. I know this much already. He was an accountant or an office clerk. Well, how have you decided that? because his hands are white and show no signs of manual labor. Also, his right sleeve is cleaner than his left. Why does that make him a clerk? Oh, Jacques, even you should know that. You were a clerk long enough. Remember the special cuffs we wore to protect our right sleeve? Uh, what do you think of all this hocus-pocus, Hugo? It's extraordinary, monsieur. It's a whole new conception of police work. Uh, here's a new young man. I don't know what to do with Bertillon. He has education, sometimes a disadvantage to a policeman. You want him? If he's interested, by all means. You're relieved, Chuck. Thank you. I am most relieved. Uh, put on your magic spectacles, you two. But remember, I require results. Since we're going to work together, I must ask what you consider the most essential qualities for a good detective. Imagination? Scientific curiosity? No, my friend. Patience and shoe leather. I want you to cover every mercantile house in Paris to discover the identity of the dead clerk. Here is his photograph and description. Yes, sir. I've traced him, the dead bookkeeper. His name is Charles Taillet, and he's been missing from his desk at the Vitre Importing Company for over a week. Very good, but why wasn't his disappearance reported? Because his accounts were in perfect order. Now here's... All his employer knew about him, and here's a list of his friends. A grocer, another accountant, a bookmaker, a certain Kabasu who also runs a restaurant. And the bank of the Seine. Very good. Let's start there. These gentlemen are from the police. They tell me Tellier has been murdered. Tell me, Kabasu, have you a wine cellar under the cafe here? A cellar? Unfortunately, no. We have a poor situation, no equipment. Will you do me a favor? Will you make brief notes on everything you know about your good friend, Taye? By all means. Anything to help the police. What do you make of it? A cafe without a wine cellar? Almost unheard of. Here go. Find out who built this place, and if the plan still exist. You go. That rope. Cut a sample of it. like that of the riverbank. Examine this post, it's crawling. Oh, tiny blind beetles. Scrape some of them off, you go. Acting stiff as a stone. You learned a great lesson tonight, Hugo. Science can never completely replace the policeman's billy. If 
I may presume to interrupt the two scientific detectives. Oh, certainly, Jacques. Your solution of the Tellier case has caused comment even in New York. You're becoming a famous man. Some clippings came in I thought you might like to see. Oh, thank you, Jacques. What's this? Oh, just a report from an American prison called Leavenworth. Bertillon measurements discredited. That's impossible. Convict meets his Bertillon twin, both serving life in the same penitentiary. Leavenworth convicts, Will West and William West, have no blood relationship, yet their Bertillon measurements are identical in seven of 11 points. The other points differed only insignificantly. Of course, it's the exception that proves the rule. The prefect was most interested. I just thought I'd pass it along. Thank you, Jacques. He couldn't wait. No, Jacques did right to bring it to me. I couldn't sleep if I thought my system might condemn men. It says the two men were not alike in one respect. Their fingerprints. What is that? I've been studying fingerprints for quite some time. From now on, I think we should include them in on the measurement cards. But her fingerprints never alike. Seemingly not. The Chinese used thumbprint identification over 1,500 years ago because they were never able to find two the same. The London police have been trying it out lately. The difficulty has been to produce clear impressions of fingerprints left at the scene of the crime. I've been experimenting with a special powder. We're tested on a very next case. Dead butler evidently was surprised in the kitchen and then retreated to this room under attack from the murderer. Or a blow on the head with some heavy object finished him. Mm. There's fragments of glass in the head wound. Oh, he was struck with his decanter. Oh, don't touch it. Try our powder for the first time. Oh, Hugo, since nothing was stolen, I want you to find out from the other servants if this man had any private feuds or personal enemies. It was well known you two quarreled, Schaeffer. More three nights before the murder. You threatened his life. We have testimony. But you have no testimony that I was in the house the night he got killed. Or in the neighborhood. Perhaps we have. Silent testimony. What is it? Oh, it's, uh, it's incomplete as yet. Well, may I go back to my work while you're completing it? Yes, yes, you may. Oh, Schaffer. Hmm? One thing before you go. Would you touch your fingers to this pad and then press them on this paper? Why not? I have no blood on my hands. Or well, scars either. This is the silent testimony that Bertillon took that day from Antoine Schaeffer. The first man ever condemned to death in France on fingerprint evidence. The prefect has arrived? He's on his way upstairs. Oh, good. Oh, Monsieur Boyval's hat and umbrella. Yes, sir. After hearing about these solved riddles, I regret more than ever that Bertillon is not alive today. His methods are still alive, monsieur. We use them. Your beloved wife's engagement ring. We dug it up out of the rose garden, wrapped in oil silk with the other jewels. It came off with some difficulty. You remember her ring finger was bruised and bloody? In order to remove it, you had to grasp it firmly, so firmly that the print of your index finger was clearly impressed on the ring. Are you implying that I'm concerned in this crime? The death of my own wife? While I was reminiscing about Bertillon's introduction of fingerprinting, Vigeois here was taking your prints from the silver handle of your umbrella. The prints from the ring and the umbrella, monsieur, are identical. As you said, it is unfortunate that Bertillon is no longer alive. Unfortunate for you, monsieur, that he ever lived. <laughs>